tell me about how meetings how, how meetings work meetings can happen impromptu they just pop up based on two people interested in a thing at that moment or they can be something that is pre-planned we have a sort of structure of how things work as far as self-directed education so you can be totally self-directed on your own and be let's say making cakes was the example so if you wanted to make a cake, you could be totally coming in on your own with your own supplies, knowing how to use an oven, making cakes safely on your own. If you wanted other people, that's when meetings are, are proposed or brought into question. So if you wanted other people, we have clubs, corporations, and clerkships. So let's say making cakes is the example. You could have you and I, for example, if we're community members, in here making cakes on any given day, so long as we both don't need resources and know how to use things safely, um, we then could just be using the kitchen freely, making cakes. That could be called cake club. So a club is are things that don't typically need resources or a budget or rules associated with them. But let's say another student wants to join and they haven't used an oven before and they don't have the proper resources to be able to make the cakes, so they need a budget. They then would have to go to school meeting, form Cake Corporation. Cake Corporation then gets rules and a budget associated with them. So then a corporation is able to be awarded money to go buy the cakes with. You could have rules as to how to use an oven safely, things along that line. So once we have a corporation, we can say, get let's say we make a motion for $200 for supplies for making cakes throughout the year. If that motion passes, then we are awarded the $200. We then have money to go buy cakes. Let's say Cake Corporation is thriving so much that we start selling cakes to the at-large community, people outside of our community. Then we have a cake clerkship. It's sort of what I do with admissions is perspective talking to families because I'm dealing with people outside of the community. So it's a little bit more responsibility than, let's say, a club or a corporation. Usually these are staff held positions, but they can also be student led, too. I know myself, I was hired by students. They were sending me the emails and everything that I was communicating directly with students that hired me. So you could also have students in these roles, but let's say you're selling cakes to the at-large community. You're then representing the community and you've got cake clerkship. So that's a little bit about mm -hmm. how the meeting structure can break down. Once you have one of these other structures in place, you don't have to have a structure right. in place. Like I said, you could be totally self-directed calling meetings whenever you wanted or you can have a corporation like, let's say, Kitchen Corporation that has been one of ours, that has been a longstanding corporation. You could have one of those already in place, already functioning, relatively moving from year to year, stable, and they have regular meetings that can be held as far as maintaining the kitchen, as far mm -hmm. as new members joining, as far as putting on events such as Hot Lunch Fridays. Mm -hmm. It really matters what the group wants to involve, whether they want it to be mm -hmm. selling mm -hmm. something or a school-wide thing or putting on an event or creating something, you would likely need more meetings associated with that. And anyone relatively can call meetings that's in these corporations. So that's a bit of how it works. Nice. <laughs> so that's the, the kind of day-to-day -day running the student interests driven kind of thing. But there's also another level of meeting at Sudbury, I think it's called all school meeting. What, how does that level work? So school meeting is every Tuesday at 1115 for us. So it happens once a week and it mm -hmm. is, it works like judicial committee in the sense that we have a school meeting team that is randomly assigned and they have to then appoint a school meeting. And then anybody else that wants to come and vote on matters can and would be counted towards that. And so school meeting is other than the team, anyone that mm -hmm. wants to attend can come and talk about any of the issues that are on the agenda for that day. But that is a regular meeting that happens mm -hmm. alongside judicial committee. Judicial committee is every day if there are um, cases and then school meeting is once a week mm -hmm. if there is an agenda or things to talk okay. about, which there usually is. <laughs> the school meeting is the rulemaking body 
I guess, except for corporation, in, you know, specific interest. But that's going to be the rulemaking body that most of those 300 are probably in from all school meetings. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. That's okay. one of the primary okay. functions then, of school meeting is creating rules and, and deleting yeah. rules or changing rules because that's a very important process of the mm-hmm. rule maintaining as well is if we feel like rules are no longer serving us or they're old rules maybe that were rolled over from last year they they might get deleted or altered there's one more kind of meeting and that's who's handling the legal and you know the the hiring well not the hiring fine because i know that's part of the thing but but you know handling payroll handling you know making sure the bills get paid that sort of uh, level of stuff those are all clerkships that um staff maintain we have a building and grounds clerk that maintain, maintains building and grounds. We've got admissions clerks that maintains admissions, PR and in-reach clerks. We've got a clerkship for just about everything, and those are all divided among yeah. staff. We've got five staff currently. We just hired our fifth one. And so, yeah, all of those type of things are divided among staff, and then we maintain them as per our clerkship. What is the legal structure that the state of Bo- state of Maryland interacts with? Sometimes it works by way of Arcadian Fellowship. So we've formed a church. The church's mission statement is freedom for democratic education for kids ages 5 to 18. It is not religiously oriented okay. other than that. Right. And it's essentially the um, overarching domain over top of the school that sort of maintains all of our legality and things. I myself am not a person that maintains that, (laughs) thank goodness, but there are people, (laughs) we we do have a board and we have meetings regularly that's associated with things like that. I know at the Village Free School, so I'm I'm near Portland, Oregon, which is where Village Free School is. They wanted to have kids on their official legal board, but there were, you know, restrictions in state law that prevented that. And so, so what they did was they had sort of created, you know, the legal board, and then they had all school meeting. Do you have uh, the ability to put under 18 year olds on your board uh, and, 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 and handle those clerkships? I'm not sure as far as our board, but I do know that we also have mm. a voting structure called assembly that's made up of parents mm. too. So assembly handles okay. our more important, well, maybe not more important, but our arguably important structures of the school, such as how much the tuition is, what happened as far as our COVID protocols and keeping families safe, things like that, our annual budget every year and how money is spent Mm -hmm. is assembly. So assembly is made up of the overarching community. So parents, sometimes grandparents, but usually it's just parents and the the day-to-day, so students and and staff. So assembly um, meets roughly two times a year, and they're the ones that handle bigger decisions like that. They handled um, where our building was going to be located and what we were paying as far as a mortgage. It's, it's all the bigger things like that. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.